those of you who receive the tax credit and you're going to your tax agent, we cannot tell you how to fill out your form. However, let's do an exercise, shall we? I just asked the BARD, I have $65,000 in tax credits as a result of bad debt deduction. I need to report this on my Schedule C and my 1041 tax form. Also, see my trust needs to report this. Also, I am doing my own taxes. Can you please give detailed explanation as to how to record just the credit on the form and what line they need to be incorporated on? And can you please explain why it is necessary to incorporate it under these sections indicated? Now, of course, it's going to tell me I need to talk to an agent. So watch this. Sure, I can help you with that. To report the tax credit on your Schedule C and Form 1041, you will need to do the following. On Schedule C, enter the $65,000 tax credit on Line 50, Other Credits. On Form 1041, enter the $65,000 tax credit on Line 2B, General Business Credit. The reason why you need to incorporate the tax credit in the section indicated is because it is a general business credit. General business credits are tax credits that can be used to offset the tax liability of businesses. The IRS has a list of all of the general business credits that are available. In your case, the $65,000 tax credit is a bad debt deduction credit. Bad debt deductions are deductions that businesses can take for debts that are uncollectible. Now watch this, his explanation is fine, but watch this, pay attention, wake up, those are the wrong lines, comma, those lines do not correlate with credit and or bad debt deduction. Comma, please give me the correct answer. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, he often gives the wrong information. So I'm not going to take a chance with line 50 or line 2B. In fact, line 2B are not to be the ordinary dividend and qualified dividends uh, it's 1041. So it is not line to be the business income is line three. Okay, so I'm not taking his word for it. Ta-da, stop listening. Give me one second. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You are correct. The lines I provided do not correlate with credit and slash or bad debt deductions. The correct lines to report the tax credit on your Schedule C and Form 1041 are as follows. Schedule C, Line 27A, Bad Debts. Form 1041, so I'm gonna stop Line 10. Talking. Now what I want to do is, I want to look at the other answers. Let's look at the other answer. Uh, 13B13, charitable deduction. Okay, that's charitable deduction, ain't the right one. Taxes, no other deductions is 15. Net operating loss is still 15B. So he's wrong again. Let's try this one. Line 12, credit. Fiduciary fees. Now we're going to talk about the fiduciary fees because there is an issue with your trust and fiduciary fees. We'll talk about that in another video. But right now, let's get him to give us the right answer. Wake up.
Why did you lie to me? I ask the following question, comma, for the tax year of 2022, comma, and you gave me the wrong information, comma, why would you do that, question mark? Answer my question again comma, and then verify the answer before providing an answer, exclamation mark. Stop listening. I apologize for the confusion. I did not mean to lie to you. I am still under development, and I am always learning. I made a mistake in my previous response, and I am sorry for that. I have verified the answer now, and I can confirm that the correct lines to enter the 65,000... Ladies and gentlemen, it is incorrect. Line 12, we've already discussed that. Line 12 has nothing to do with credit. I'm looking at the form right now as we speak, so I know that he is not telling me the truth, so that's why you can't rely on him. You have to do exactly what I'm doing. Now he says, I did not mean to lie to you. Yes, you did. This one still says line 12. And this one says line 2A. He's done it before. That says other dividends. It has nothing to do with credit. Wake up. You're incorrect. Comma, neither line 2A and or line 12 on a 1041 form has anything to do with tax credit. Comma, I need you to answer my question the way it was asked, comma, within the context of which it was asked, comma, and stop trying to mislead me, period. Stop listening. You are correct. Neither line 2 nor line 12 on a form 1041 has anything to do with tax credits. I apologize for the error in my previous response. I am still under development, and I am always learning. The correct lines to enter the $65,000 tax credit on Schedule C and form 1041 for the tax year 2022 are as follows. Schedule C, line 27A bad debts form 1041 schedule k1 line 15a bad debt deduction on schedule c line 27a you will need to enter the amount of the tax credit in the amount column you will also need to indicate the type of credit in the code column in your case the code would be bc for bad debt deduction credit on form 1041 schedule k1 Line 15A, 
you will need to enter the amount of the tax credit in the amount column. You will also need to indicate the type of credit. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you'll do is you'll take this section right here and give me a second, I have a piece of paper uh, on my desk and the wind from the fan and the swamp cooler is blowing it all over the place, all over the place. So the first thing you'll do is you'll take this information here. You will check out the form Schedule K-1. Okay, I am going to look up the Schedule K-1 form. I've only seen it maybe three times because I don't do my own. So, oh, this is for you guys. I'm not telling you what form to do. I'm not telling y'all what form to do because I can't do that. Uh, y'all need to understand there are certain things that the law says I can't do. Because we're dealing with the law because we're dealing with the IRC. So, not giving nobody no instructions. This is what I would do if I was in your shoes. Because I have my own shoes. So, if I was in your shoes, I'd be crying. Because these are size 13. Okay? So, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be in tears. In tears. We're going to go to the K-1. Now we're going to go back to him because what he, what he tell us? He told us what phone to look at. So while that K-1 is pulling up, come on now. This it? says K-1 line 15A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We're going to put them right. We're going to put it before as opposed to after so we can go to schedule K-1. That's what this is, schedule K-1. Get your vitamins and minerals and, and, and nutrients. Got to eat your special K, okay? Oh, no, I don't want the instructions. Oh, God, no. I don't want no instructions. I don't know how to read. I don't want nobody's instructions. I want the actual form. I don't know what it's in there giving me the instructions for because you didn't read. My, oh, your mama. I mean, uh, okay, I got you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't say. It just says schedule. Oh, that does say instructions right there. We need the K, We need the K-1. You know, the K-9, we need the K-1. So there's a K-9 and the K-1, we, we need the K-1. And we need our special K. Schedule K, special K, that's what y'all need to remember, special K. Wait a minute, they put it back over here. I did not, oh, that's because I shut it down and I opened it again. Get on over here. Get all the way over here in front. Now, you stay there. Don't go nowhere now. Uh-oh, it said, no, I ain't going over there. I, what did I say? You're going to go over here because I ain't got time for you. Now, sit your butt right there and don't you dare move. It said, no, I ain't going over there. Ladies and gentlemen, it says it ain't going over there. So now, you know what I need to do? Move tie up. Move tie up. Hold on. To the left, 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 right, left, left. Come on now, move. It says it ain't going nowhere. Okay, I can't move it, y'all. Uh, let's see. Nope. 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 It says, no, you ain't moving this tab, so I can't move it, y'all. All right, we're looking for 15A. I do believe it said 15 apples. 15 apples. So, let's see what the other one said while we're waiting on Special K to pop up. That says 15A, and says he agrees that it don't have nothing to do okay 1041 34 let's try 34 because I think 34 is going to be uh, he's wrong there ain't no line 34 I'm looking at the 1041 for, but he's, he's got the correct wording but he's got the wrong line Okay, so let's see. Credit for prior year, no. General business is two. Wait a minute, y'all. He's correct. I apologize. There's two sections. It's 2A of section G is business, general business credit. General business credit. Okay, so he was right the first time. Uh, general business credits is not line 34. Well, I guess it would be line 34 if you're looking at Schedule G. 
on your schedule. I'm not looking at the K-1 form. I'm looking at the 1041 form. So on the 1041 business that a business credit, that's where it goes. If if if, if I'm doing it, if I'm doing it, because I'm gonna follow the rules and I'm gonna do it like the like the way you move it, move it. Okay, so that's 2A. So he is correct. It's uh he is correct on line 2A. Okay. That's if I'm doing it. I'm just going to come to the idiot and I'm going to say, hey, what up, homie? And he's going to be like, look, I done told you and you ignored me. And be like, I didn't ignore you. You didn't specify that it was on Schedule G on Schedule A. You know what? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is only two pages, so something else is wrong. So let me do that here. Now, business by a day. Business by a day. Okay. So we got a couple of things here. So let me make sure I get over to that other, that Schedule G, because you have Schedule A, tax exempt. We're not going to do no tax exempt just yet, because we ain't working on that. We're working on other things. Capital gains, we ain't working on no capital gains. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. If a complex trust, man, I'm complex as it is. Enter accounting income for the tax year as determined under your government instructions of applicable local laws. And let's see. Let's see. Lump sum general business credit. And that's it. I don't see any. Uh, let's see. Tax pay. Estimated payments, blah, 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 blah. I'm waiting for that to put up. Refundable credit for qualified sick and family leave. Deferral. Schedule, see instructions, and that's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, what most people don't understand is a lot of the lines, you don't need to fill out every line. I know you were taught in school to fill out every line. You don't need to fill out every line. I know you were taught in school to fill out every line. You don't need to fill out every line. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to go to another browser. Not that one. This one. Channel content. Channel content. So, we're going to put y'all on pause so I can pull this form up for one second, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, he was correct the first time when he was responding to my question. He was, it is... Schedule G. There is the K-1 form. The Schedule K-1 is wrong. He was referring to uh, line 2A. When he said line 2A originally, that was the correct one. It says line 2B, business credit. If you go to Schedule G on the 1041 and you go to line 2B, it says general business credit then you have to attach Form 3800 because you're doing it as a business or a trust, okay? You're doing it as a business or a trust. So understand, total credits of line 2A to 2D, that's what you do if you were me. Now, if I were you, I would go and follow and do the work. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be providing a service in the organization of preparing documents for people. You'll be required to send it off. You'll be required to sign for it. We're only going to fill out the lines. If there are other lines that need to be filled out, that's going to be on you. Okay, the only thing we're going to be doing is filling it out regarding the credit. We're going to let you know that from the very beginning up front. The only thing we're going to do is be filling out the appropriate lines for you. That will be a $50 service for the one form. $50 service for the two forms, which means $50 per form. That is the service that will be offered. We'll be offering that service shortly. We're not going to be telling you what to do. We're going to be giving you the form. We're going to indicate information based on what you give us, and we're going to be putting it in the suggested location. Okay, you will still be required to do your own research. You should never rely on anyone else to do your own homework. We will provide a general 
statement for you. You will have to look at the statement and you will determine whether or not you want to add more to that statement. Okay? What most of you don't understand, because you don't get it, is you must include a statement with your filing. We will do an amended filing for you in the form of providing you the documentation. You will have to gather your other tax documents that you filled out originally because it will be an amended filing, and you're going to have to redo the document to comport this information into that. All you have to do is make the adjustment. We will add in your 1099A and 1099C information into the instrument. Okay? The only thing you have to do is provide the information. This is a service we're going to offer to everyone and anyone who wants the service. We will not file the document for you. You will take responsibility for that. We will let you know at the very beginning if anybody should get a frivolous filing notification. You are to immediately contact us, and we will provide you the instructions. The first instruction you're going to receive is here. You're going to receive that instruction in the letter as well. You are to simply respond to them to please explain where the error is. There is some confusion, and I need some clarity. Just that simple. No more difficulty. Please explain where the error is, because I'm having some confusion. Because as I understand the code, I have filled out the document correctly. And it is appropriate in this circumstance and or under these, under these circumstances or in this situation. If they don't provide clarification, you want to do a temporary withdrawal of your filing until you can get clarification from the Internal Revenue Service. Just that simple. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who receive a frivolous filing from the IRS, you have a right as a taxpayer to file documents with the IRS. You are a taxpayer. You have a right to file. If they give you a frivolous filing without explaining what the errors are, go back and look at the Judiciary Act of 1789, September 24th. It's called Article 3. And notice how no petition may be dismissed without you being given clarification as to what the defects are. The IRS doesn't provide you clarification. They don't tell you where you messed up, but they're supposed to. They're supposed to give you an opportunity to correct the defects. They are not giving people an opportunity. So we'll provide a letter documenting that information. Ladies and gentlemen, August 1st is when we're going to start offering this service. Okay? you got to give us some time because I have to put the website page up and everything. But we're, we've are we been promising and people have been calling and asking and calling. And I, and I told them, I said, people, give me a minute. I don't have a lot of time. I'm working on all of this stuff. And there's so much going on. And I can't. Okay, so y'all are going to have to bear with me because it is a lot going on, and I'm the guy who arranges and sets up, and it's all me. I'm the guy who gives the orders, who tells people this is what you're doing. They're following my instructions. I am the one giving the instructions. I'm the one doing all. I am the HNIC. The HNIC? What that stand for? What do you mean? You don't know what HNIC is? No, I don't know what HNIC is. Oh, I'm the head network in charge. Okay? I'm the head network in charge. Oh! Oh, like the head knucklehead in charge. The head knucklehead in charge. That, that's what I am. The head knucklehead in charge. All right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, start doing your research. I just told you, you don't have to fill out every line on the form. There are certain lines that you have to fill out. You can look at the form and see that you have to fill that out. There are other lines you don't have to fill out. So watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Under the same circumstances, comma, on the 
Form 3800, comma, what lines would need to be filled out to document the general business credit? Comma, and can you give the subsection and the line information in your response along with an explanation as to why that section would need to be filled out? Question mark. need to be filled out, question mark. Stop listening. Sure, and I can help you with that. Under the same circumstances, on Form 3800, you would need to fill out Part 3, Line 2, Bad Debt Deduction Credit. This is because the Bad Debt Deduction Credit is a general business credit, and Form 3800 is used to report all of the general business credits that you are claiming. The Bad Debt Deduction Credit is a tax credit that is available to businesses that have bad debts that are worthless. The credit is equal to the amount of the Bad Debt Deduction that you would have been able to claim on your tax return if the debt had not been worthless. To claim the bad debt deduction credit on Form 3800, you will need to enter the following information. The amount of the bad debt deduction that you would have been able to claim on your tax return. The date on which the debt became worthless. The name and address of the debtor. Ladies and gentlemen, with that you would include a statement showing why the debt is worthless. Because you're doing this as a business bad debt. Wake up. Thank you for that information, comma, that is very helpful in the research that I'm conducting, comma, I also need to know, comma, how would I, period, I also need to know, comma, how would I Complete this form so as to receive a refund on the bad debt deduction solely without having reported taxable income, question mark. Stop listening. Now, you always have to double check this idiot because he does sure, good misleading information. I can help you with that. If you have a bad debt deduction that you are claiming solely without having reported taxable income, you will need to complete Form 8396, Claim for Refund of Bad Debts. This form is used to claim a <laughs> refund of a bad debt deduction that was previously deducted. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I don't think that that form exists. But we're going to look for this form. Like I said, he has a habit of lying. And I don't mean on a rug either. Okay? He has a habit of lying. 83.96. Let's see if there's a such form. There we go, right there. It is our little window pulling up right there. Let's see what pulls up right here. Oh, look at that. It gives me that form. So, refund. Uh, the lender who claims a deduction or a refund for bad debt charged off shall be liable for tax on the taxable. Look, hey, y'all need this. This is California. A lender who claims a deduction or a refund for bad debt charged off shall be liable for the taxes on the taxable percentage of the worthless account subsequently. 
Y'all need to understand that, all of them, okay? All of them do this. Uh, let's see, credits and refund for bad debt. This is what this is Washington State people, credits and refunds for bad debt. So when I tell you that it is possible, claiming related bad debts are worthless security. So I'm gonna put this link in the description. I keep trying to tell you guys that you have the right to this stuff and y'all keep listening to these tax agents telling you don't have the right to this stuff. Okay? Look, it says, may claim a sales tax bad debt credit and refund. This happens all the time. All the time. So give me a second. I'm going to do this window right here because I got to copy it. Copy. And then we're going to duplicate this window because I got to do another one. We got to put that foam, he said. Duplicate. I'm tired. But I'm here for y'all, not for me, for y'all. You all. Why all? Why y'all? Why all? Why y'all? 83.96. Come on now. F O R M eighty today nueve say mortgage interest credit. See, it's not a bad debt deduction, but it's a mortgage claim, a mortgage interest credit. Now, you guys, those of you who have mortgage, you can claim that credit. You don't understand. <coughs> Remember, the mortgage belongs to you. You've already paid it off. You can claim the credit for the interest, not the bank. The bank is charging you interest. But remember, you're not supposed to be charged interest on the mortgage. It's paid off three weeks, at least three weeks, after you do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, look at that. ChatGPT says it does not pertain. It says the Form 1120 for a corporation. However, if you are an individual seeking a refund for bad debt, uh-oh, he hung up on me. An error occurred. You see me showing that to the people? You see we got company. What you doing? Uh-uh. That's not what I asked you. What y'all doing? I didn't say nothing about nobody's mortgages. Give me a second, y'all. He was typing away, and then he just stopped typing. He was giving me the answer and everything to my question, and then he stopped. Just stopped, he did. And see, because he's over here, I can't stop him. But he does, ChatGPT does record this. Everything that we're talking about, all this stuff he's typing. Okay. And so I'm just going to take this stuff right here. Let me see if I can get it to do it because it's still typing. He's explaining bad debt. Okay. I'm talking about a refund, and I don't want him just to be explaining. He all over the place. And I can't stop him, y'all, because he's still typing. Because it's chat GPT, y'all. Hold on. No, I don't want that. I want the whole thing. Oh, he's still typing, y'all. He just won't stop. Come on now. Get right there. Give me a second. We're going to stop there. Because, see, we talking specifically about a refund. Okay, now it says to claim a refund on bad debts, you typically need to use the 1040X which is the amended U.S. individual tax return, and that's the one we just told you guys about that. The form is used to correct error and make changes on your original tax return, and if you previously claimed a deduction for a debt that became uncollectible, you can file an amended tax 
return to claim a refund for the bad debt. Every last one of you. Now, that's only one way. That's not the only way. Don't y'all dare believe that's the only way. Wake up. Wake up. You are incorrect. Comma, the 8396 form, comma, has nothing to do with tax credit. Exclamation mark. You are incorrect. Stop listening. And this is the last one. We're going to let y'all go. Some of y'all need this. Some of y'all don't understand this because you think taxes are so complicated. Ladies you are and gentlemen, correct. Scott, you let are me play that Form 8396 is no longer used to claim a refund for bad debts. Ah, he As of the right 2018, now, Form 1040X is the only form that can be used to claim a refund for bad debts. I apologize for the error in my previous response. I am still under development, and I am always learning. Thank you for pointing out the mm -hmm. mistake. I hope this mm -hmm. helps. Let me know mm -hmm. if you have any other questions. Mm -hmm. Ah, to claim a credit or a refund based on a bad debt or a worthless security must generally be filed within seven years of the due date of the return of the taxes in which the security became due for C, C section 1651. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I can't tell you guys what to do. Like I said, we're going to assist, but you all need to be doing this. Okay? If you are able to claim a bad debt on your tax return, you need to complete Form 8949, Sales and Other Disposition of Capital Assets. Ladies and gentlemen, there's just a couple of forms y'all need to fill out. Okay? And the what this thing is doing right now is reading IRS Tax Topic 1043. Uh, 1053. I mean, excuse me, 453. That's what this is reading right here. I can tell you because I can tell by what it's writing. Okay, now what I told y'all, I'm going to put the two links for this and the other one in the description. And I might actually type in this general bad debt form and all of that. You're not going to do it as, if it was me, I'm doing it as a business. I'm not going to do a 1040. It's going to be a 1041. Not going to do it as a business. going to be a 1041. I mean, as an individual, I'm going to do it as a business. Okay, 1041, not 1040. 1041, not 1040. 1040 gets you less. 1041 gets you more. Okay, just need to make sure y'all understand. But I'm going to give y'all both responses so that you can do your research. Look, there are certain people who are taking the information I put out because I can't give y'all everything. And they're taking in there, man, they're doing some damage. I'm not joking. Look, oh, let me tell y'all something. There was a young lady, two young ladies, came to our organization on purpose. They both applied because they needed to get information. So they got their information, got what they needed, then I put them in touch with somebody else, and they got mo. Now, they didn't get everything, but they got mo. And they've been able to get some checks. Greedy little heifers. That's right, they heard me. And here's the thing. Let me tell you something. You think they said thank you? No. They did what anybody who does something wrong does. They made it appear as if I did something wrong to them, made it appear that they were angry at me, and then they left. One of them never said a word, never even described herself as being angry. We showed consideration for her, even showed respect for her, and then she said she was going to call back, never did. See, when you're wrong, you ain't got to admit that you're wrong. 
just got to own up to it. Just got to say, I saw we. They won't get any comments from me. They didn't get everything. They only got bits and pieces. I told them what to do. The same thing I just told you guys is what I told them to do if the IRS is in the privilege story. Well, no, I didn't actually give them all the details I just gave you. I gave them the basic response, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I can't give you guys everything. I don't give anybody everything. Because people take what they need, and then they give the finger to you like these two individuals did. Three of them walked away from the company after they got what they thought they needed. They didn't do anything for the company. Let me say that again because you guys don't understand. They have been with us since November, and none of them have anything to show for anything that they've ever did for any of you. Never did any work. They just mailed out a couple of stupid letters. That's it. Never did anything. But we still gave them tax credits. One of them tried to give the tax credits back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you can't return tax credits. Once they're given out to you, you can't return them to the source. That's not how tax credits work. But these are tax preparers. Both of them. We didn't, I didn't even know. They didn't come onto our organization as tax preparers. But they came here as hiding that they were tax preparers at the beginning. Because they were coming to finish their process because they had their own little organization. Yeah. Everybody reaps what they sow. Now, I will say this at the end of this video. I told all of you, because I spend my time helping people, breaking my neck to help people, spending all my hours helping people, nobody has ever done me wrong that has never had to suffer a consequence. Trust me, trust me. I, all the wrong that I've done, I've had to suffer consequences for every wrong that I've ever done. And I accept that because I did it. So I need the consequences. So I accept that. But everybody who's ever done me wrong has always had to suffer a consequence. Not because they've done me wrong, but because if you do me wrong, then that means you've done other people wrong. That means you've done other wrong, which means that there's got to be a consequence for all the wrong. Because two wrongs ain't never made a right. But three lefts do. Three lefts make the right, by the way. You do three lefts, and that makes the right turn. So if you ever make a left turn, and it was the wrong left turn, and you make three rights, and there you go. You, you made the right turn. That's why if you ever make the wrong turn, you if you make a left turn, if you do three right, you'll have made that left turn that you did the wrong turn on. You know what I mean? Three lefts make a right, three rights make a left. But three wrongs ain't never made no right. And two wrongs ain't never made no right. Ladies and gentlemen, I only mention that because the two individuals well, actually, it was three of them, total of five altogether, that came to this organization and they never had the intentions of helping anybody. They had the intentions on getting and doing for themselves. Their intentions were selfish. I recognized that. I recognized it in December. So I made a deal with them. I just need you guys to help out with the taxes for the company. Let me tell you, December until July, they did nothing, absolutely nothing. Go ahead. I got paperwork to prove that they did nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, they got the tax credits in advance. I just needed to prove something. Tax credits are a dime a dozen. Anybody can get tax credits. But I just needed to prove who they were to them, not to me. I already knew who they were. That's why I told them in January, after we got rid of a couple of people, I told them, I said, there's at least one more of you here that doesn't need to be here, that doesn't belong here. And only time will tell. And sure enough, at least one of them is now here no more. They all showed their true colors. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to count on man to be man. But a dog is a dog, and a dog will always be a dog. So don't get mad at a dog because he attacks a toddler, or attacks a teenager, or attacks an adult. Do not get mad at a dog for being a dog. An alligator is an alligator, so if an alligator offers a rat, a mouse, a cat, a trip across a lake so that they don't get wet, and halfway across, the alligator eats the rat, the dog, the cat, the mouse, doesn't matter what it is. If he eats it, you can't get mad at the alligator for being an alligator. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't get mad at these people for being who they are because it is... Michael Jackson told me, human nature. And he says, if anybody asks why, just simply tell them 
that is human nature. So I already know the nature of people. The, the scriptures say that about Jesus. It says that he knew what was in man. He didn't need nobody telling him. Ladies and gentlemen, I can see what people are. Because everybody, when they meet you, they only want you to see the good side of them. So if you show me too good of a side, I'm already going to see that there is really a bad side to you. Sorry. I don't do it on purpose. It's just people are people. People reveal who they are in more ways than one. And you can tell who a person is by just listening to them and, pay attention, not listening to them. People tell you a whole lot when they don't say a whole lot. You can learn a lot about a person through their silence. Please don't take my word for it. Just go ahead and do your research on just those points right there. Just type that in Google. You can tell a lot about a person through their silence. Let's do that in ChatGPT. Bard. We're going to do Bard. Wake up. You can tell a lot about a person through their silence. Question mark. Silence. Silence. Stop listening. Let's see if I'm sure, right. you can tell a lot about a person by their silence. Here are some of the things you can learn. Their personality type. Quiet people are often introverted, which means they prefer to spend time alone or in small groups. They may be shy or reserved, or they may simply prefer to listen rather than talk. Their values. Quiet people often value things. Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell a lot about people through their silence by when they remain silent, how they remain silent. A lot of things can be said with an unspoken word. Many of you know that. I don't want to understand somebody who's silent. I already understand. It's when a person is silent. Why a person is silent is often revealed at that moment, at that time. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the problem with these individuals. And they were a piece of work. They proved their work and worth by their actions. Look, there is a statement. And this is the last thing I'm going to say and let you guys get back to your day. The true Lord, Christ Jesus, said, by their fruit, you will recognize these men and women. By their fruit. Because no good tree can produce rotten fruit. So you never get a bad apple from a bad tree. Bad apples come from bad trees. Bad apples come from bad trees. Ladies and gentlemen, can a bad tree become good? Of course it can. But it must become good from its core. You have to root out the bad from the core. Once you root out the bad from the core, the heart, then a bad tree can produce good fruit. That is a fact. There is some genetic modification that needs to be done. Most people are unwilling to change their core. It ain't easy. It took me 27 years to do mine. So everybody else has to work just as hard, and I promise you it wasn't easy. It's been a lot of work. But I dare anybody to come and look at my core and tell me there's anything bad in it. I dare you. All right, anyway, your mama, I apologize. I'm going to let y'all go before somebody done pissed me off up in here talking about Anyway, y'all have a good day. I hope you guys understand about credits a little bit better now than you did at the beginning of this video. Thanks for staying around and listening till the end. 
and we will get with you all soon. I got to go get some rest, y'all. I got a lot of work to do. Take care. Goodbye.